ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان صدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار معاشر المسلمين الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول يا ايها الذين امنوا او يو بيليف كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم فاستنج از بين بريسكرايب فور يو لايك ويت واز بريسكرايب فور ذا مسلمز بيفور يو لعلكم تتقون ويت ذا سول ايم اند بابوز اند انتنشن لعلكم تتقون سو ذات يو كان بيكم بيبل اوف تقوى Nine nights of Ramadan have passed with this being the ninth day of fasting it is time in fact it is past time for us to start to reach the goal of la'allakum tattaqun la'allakum tattaqun the goal behind fasting is not to lose weight the goal behind fasting is not just to change your schedule the goal behind fasting is not just for you to be someone who's not like in Ramadan or outside of Ramadan no لعلكم تتقون so you can become people of taqwa and taqwa is getting close to allah by worshiping him and staying away from the prohibitions that is taqwa and that is what you call the fear of allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he says ايام معدودات it is only a few days الله سبحانه وتعالى tells us about fasting ايام معدودات it is but a few days and if you want to know how few they are look how nine have flied nine already with tonight being the tenth night ايام معدودات a few a few days فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم so whoever of you witnesses this month let him fast because it is one of the best ways to get close to Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then in the next verse he says to us شهر رمضان الذي انزل فيه القران the month of ramadan the month of ramadan and there is the only time ramadan is mentioned in the quran this one time shahr ramadan alladhi it is the month in which unzila fihi alquran the quran was revealed in it hudan lin nas wa bayyinat min alhuda wal furqan the quran which is a guidance for the people and a clarification of what you need to be guided and a furqan distinguishing and the criteria between good and bad truth and falsehood allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tied ramadan to the quran or he tied the quran to ramadan and there's a secret behind that because this is the month of the quran we have to know uh, my, uh, my brothers and sisters allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وربك يخلق ما يشاء ويختار and it is your lord who creates what he wants 
and he chooses what he wants wa rabbuka yakhluqu ma yasha'u wa yakhtar ya lord it is he who creates what he wants and he chooses and makes special from what he created what he wants allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created the human kind in billions if not trillions and he chose from them the five ulul azm ibra nuh and ibrahim and musa and isa and muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and from them he chose muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam wa yakhtar and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created the days and he chose from the weekly days friday to be the best day wa yakhtar and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he chose of all of the days of the year yawm al nahr the day of eid al hajj al akbar that is the greatest day of the year as the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is saying and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the earth and the lands in it. And Allah he chose Makkah over all the other lands. Just like Allah he revealed books. And from all the books he made this book the most special one. Al-Quran. So if you want to know the status of the Quran and Ramadan. And if you want to know the excellence of the Quran and Ramadan. It is like comparing Makkah to any other city. It is like comparing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to any other Prophet. That is how great Ramadan is compared to the other months. And that is how great the Quran is compared to the other books. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Allah Nazzala Ahsan Al Hadith. Allah has revealed the Quran which is the best words. A book whose parts resemble each other and it repeats itself because of the great message in it. When those who believe in their Lord and they fear Him when they read the Quran, their bodies they shake. And then their hearts and their bodies they find calmness and peace. In the dhikr of Allah, the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He glorified Himself by Him revealing the Quran. Allah, He said, Blessed and exalted is He, Allah, the one who revealed the Furqan to His slave Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Athna ala nafsi, He praised Himself. For revealing the Quran. Alhamdulillah, Allah Nazzala Ala Abdihi Al Kitaba, Anzala Ala Abdihi Al Kitaba, Walam Yaja Allahu Iwaja. All perfect praise belongs to Allah who sent down this book. And in it there's no contradiction. Qayyiman, it is upright. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He called this book a book which is blessed. Wahada Kitabun Anzalnahu Mubarak. And this book which we have revealed, which is blessed. Just like this is Shahrun Mubarak, this book is also Mubarak. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, This book is perfect. Kitabun uhkimat ayatuhu thumma fusilat min ladun hakim in khabir. A book whose verses have been perfected and then they have been explained in clear detail. It is from the one who's the most wise, the one who knows everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He called this book full of wisdom. Allah says, I swear by the Quran full of wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This Quran is a reminder to us. Quran is the dhikr, and the Quran which is a reminder for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This is the guidance for those who want to go to Jannah and be saved from the hellfire. Hudan lil It is a guidance for those who fear their Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He called His book Ruh, the soul. Because nobody, you might be living and breathing and eating, but if you have no Quran in you, you are dead. You are dead. You are dead before your death. You are dead before your death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, min amrina. And like that, we reveal to you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a ruh, a spirit, a soul. That's what gives soul as a spirit to your iman. That is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, 
الذي ليس في جوفه شيء من القرآن كبيت الخرب the one who has nothing of the Quran in his heart is like the ruins the house which is broken down what benefit is that house Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says this book is a shifa it's a medicine فيه شفاء للناس it is a cure for the people wallahi nobody who suffers stress or distress or anxiety or sadness or sorrow or anything and he reads the Quran except that Allah cures him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ikhwani ya ayyuha nas o oh humankind qad ja'atkum maw'idhatun min rabbikum there has come to you a maw'idha from your lord a reminder there has come to you a reminder from your lord and also it is a cure and it is a guidance for those who believe qul bi fadlillah wa bi rahmatihi fa bi dhalika afrahu Allah says say to them by the fadl of Allah that is Islam and the rahmah of Allah that is the book that is the reason we're supposed to become happy about huwa khairun mimma yajma'un that is better than the paychecks we're running for and the money we're running for that is what we should become happy for Allah says that in surah Yunus that is what you should become happy for that Allah revealed to you a book and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given great miracles he was given great miracles he went up to the seventh heaven sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to speak to animals the moon was split and all other great miracles yet he says to us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma min nabiyin ما من نبي من الأنبياء إلا وقد أُوتي ما مثل ما به مثل آمن به الناس. There's no prophet except that he was given something, a miracle, through which people believed in him. وكان الذي أُوتي تو هذا الوحي. And the greatest miracle I have been given is this wahi, this Quran. فأرجو أن أكون أكثر نبيا تبعا يوم القيامة وهو. So I hope to be the Prophet who has the most followers on the Day of Judgment. And he is. The greatest miracle to be revealed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easy. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ Allah says he has made this Quran easy to remember in more than five or ten times of the Quran. But Allah then asks, فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ Are there any of you who are going to take it and remember this Quran? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, Inna hadha al-Qur'ana yahdi lillati hiya aqwa. This Qur'an and this only Qur'an, only the Qur'an, it guides to everything which is best. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum in the hadith I mentioned last week to show you that this is the month of the Qur'an, just like this is the month of fasting, just like this is the month of taraweeh and qiyamul layl, just like this is the month of giving and charity. He describes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by saying, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَجْوَدَ النَّاسِ He used to be the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most generous of people. وَكَانَ أَجْوَدُ مَا يَكُونُ فِي رَمَضَانِ And he used to be more generous in Ramadan. حِينَ يَلْقَاهُ جِبْرِيلِ When Jibreel used to come and meet him. فَيُدَرِّسَهُ الْقُرْآنِ And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would sit and read the Quran to Jibreel alayhi salam every night of Ramadan and they would finish the whole Quran every Ramadan and the last Ramadan he was alive sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he read the Quran twice to Jibreel in one Ramadan if that is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the best and the most the best chosen Prophet of Allah with the best chosen angel of Allah they are studying in the best chosen month of Allah the best chosen book of Allah what about me and you what about me and you? Where are we from the Quran? And we should fear. We should fear to be from those who turn away from the Quran. And then Allah punishes us. Psychologically and physically. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ نُقَيِّدْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينٌ And whoever turns away from the dhikr of Allah, whoever turns away from the Quran, and Ya'ashu, it is just to blink away. Whoever blinks away from the Quran, Allah says, what happens to you? نُقَيِّضْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا That is when the devils, they come and attack you. 
and the devils are your qareen, they are your friends. That is why you see you don't do any good. And when you want to do good, even two rakahs seem like you're carrying a mountain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he warns us, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ And whoever turns away from my remembrance, the Qur'an, then he shall have a tough life. That is the promise of Allah. You shall have a tough life. You will have a tough life if you turn away from the Qur'an. And we should fear the day when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes to complain. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبْ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا He'll say, Ya Rabb, on that day of judgment, the best prophet will say, Oh my Lord, my people took the Quran as something to be left. We should fear to be from that group. And maybe if you have problems in your life, Wallah, it is time to ask yourself sincerely, maybe this is the problem I have in my life. Maybe this is the source of the problems. Where am I from the Quran? وَهَذَا كِتَابٌ مُبَارَكٌ Allah says, this blessed book. You take it, it brings blessings in your life. You leave it, it brings sadness and sorrow and every kind of difficulty. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ And this hadith is reported by Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. And from Uthman it is reported by Abdul Rahman al-Sulami. Khairukum, the best of you. The best of you. It's not by skin color or the money you have or the job you have. It doesn't matter. Khairukum, the best of you. Man ta'allam al-Quran, those who learn the Quran, not just read it, they learn the Quran. They learn the Quran. How sad it is, how sad it is that the majority of Muslims and I'm making this statement because that's what I feel. The majority of Muslims, if you are to ask them, Wallahi, today, what is the meaning of الماعون, What is the meaning of Li'ilafi Quraysh? A surah he's been reading for 20, 30, 50 years. He doesn't know. What are you doing? Then you're going to cry, the Ummah. Oh, look at those leaders. Don't look at the leaders. Look at yourself first. Look at yourself. The best of you. Are those who learn the Quran, not just read the Quran. That is why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to learn the Quran from Jibril the whole month. And then wa'allamahu, and then he teaches it. Those are the best people. That is why it was the job of Jibril alayhi salam. That is why it was the job of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That is why it was the job of Abu Bakr and Uthman and Ali. That is where it was the job of the Sahaba. Abu, Abu Abdurrahman al-Sulami who narrated this hadith from Uthman. After narrating this hadith, he would say, وَهَذَا الَّذِي أَقْعَدَنِي مَقْعَدِي هَذَا أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَا فَدَرَّسَ الْقُرْآنِ فِي مَسْجِدْ كُوفَ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَا He would say, this hadith is the one which has made me sit here. He taught the Quran for 40 years in the masjid in Kufa. That is the best job. That is the best job. For you to learn the Quran and then teach it to others. Khairukum, the best of you. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, Hamdan Kathiram, Toyiban, Mubarakan Fi. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت باركت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وارض اللهم عن خلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر أصحابه أجمعين The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
he said to us in the hadith reported by Imam An Nasai and Imam At Tirmidhi. Yujau bi sahib al Quran yom al Qiyamah. On the day of judgment, sahib al Quran, and this word it comes a lot in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sahib al Quran. صاحب القرآن هو الذي يقرأه بالترتيل ويحفظ القرآن ويتعاهده ويتعلمه ويعمل به صاحب القرآن the companion of the Quran is the one who recites the Quran and recites it with proper tajweed and tartil and he memorizes the Quran and is constant with the Quran is not just in Ramadan and he learns and he studies the Quran because that is the goal behind the Quran and the greater goal, he acts on the Quran. Or before going to that hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam again to show us the tie between fasting and the Quran. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al-Quran wa siyam yashfa'ani yawm al-qiyamah. The Quran and the fasting, they will intercede for you, they will ask for you in front of Allah. يقول القرآن the Quran will say يا رب يا رب منعته النوم منعته النوم بالليل فشفعني فيه I prevented him from sleeping because he was standing up for tarawih he was standing up for قيام الليل he was reading the Quran in the depths of the night so let me intercede for him فيشفع so the Quran will ask for you to go to Jannah ويقول الصيام and the fasting will say يا رب منعته الطعام والشراب والشهوات I prevented him from eating and drinking and his desires فشفعني فيه so let him intercede for him فيشفعان and they'll intercede for you فيدخل الجنة we ask Allah to make us from the people of جنة يجاء بصاحب القرآن the companion of the Quran will be brought on the day of judgment فيقول القرآن إن القرآن والأسف فهم ونسي يا رب يا رب أو الله ما يلاد حله أدون هم بيوتيفاي هم فيلبس تاج الكرامة and is given a crown of nobility this is in front of everybody the day when everybody will be resurrected in one field the people of the Quran will stand out the Quran will ask Allah, Ya Rabb, adorn him, beautify him. For you will karam will be given a crown of nobility. Like how the kings today wear crowns of gold, you'll be given a crown of nobility, karama. For yaqulu zidhu Ya Rabb, and the Quran say, Ya Rabb, increase him. For you will karama, and he's given a robe of nobility. Thumma yuqalu lahu, then it is said to him, He'll be told, Iqra, read the Quran like you used to read. Waratil, and reread it with proper tartil. Wartaqi, and you go up. Because your last stage will be the last verse you memorized of this dunya. More than that, more than that, ya ikhwan. From the barakah of the Quran, is not, it's not just for you. The Quran, it changes the whole society. The Quran is one of the best things to do for your parents. Whether your parents are alive or dead, it doesn't matter. In the hadith reported in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, يُؤْتَ بِالْوَالِدَانِ the two parents will be brought on the day of judgment. They'll be given a crown to wear. A crown which is so shining, it is shining more than the sun. And then they'll be brought again. They'll be brought again. For yulbasani hulla, and they are given robes to wear or bracelets to wear. 
لا يقوم بهما الدنيا if you take the whole wealth of the world today it's not equal to that فيقولان and then they ask يا رب أن لنا هذا how did we get this how did we get this because they know maybe they don't deserve it فيقال لهم أو فيقال لهم and it is said to them بأخذ ولدكم القرآن by your child being someone of the Quran your parents will be honored like that they'll be told because of your child being someone of the Quran someone who used to read the Quran and learn the Quran and memorize the Quran and act on the Quran your parents will be honored like that that is enough of a reason to make us people of the Quran ikhwan. Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu he said as in the Muslim of Imam Ahmad again Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna lillahi ahlina fil ard surely Allah has his special people he chose on the earth Qalu man hum ya rasulallah when he said this, they asked, they said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, who are these people? Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ahlul Qur'an Hum ahlullahi wa khasatu The people of the Qur'an They are the people of Allah and His special ones Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He chose of, he chose of all the prophets Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and just like he chose of all the lands, Mecca. And just like he chose of all the months, Ramadan. And just like he chose of all of the days of the week, Friday. And just like he chose of all of the days of the year, the greater day of the day of Eid of uh, Hajj al-Akbar. Likewise, Allah chose of the people, the people of the Quran. Qumul Salam. 